The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Twenty-eight oh eight point six five on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's uh, up 54. NASDAQ's up uh, 25.26. Uh, Russell, again, leading the charge today, up about eight points. Um, we'll see how all this works out, but um, everybody just a little nervous uh, once the market moves higher. And I think we're starting to see some shorts move in on every bounce, although eh, not a lot actually happening on those pullbacks so far. We'll have to see how the end of the day goes. And of course, uh, Tonight, probably have some pricing for some IPOs, probably tomorrow night, too. And generally, that means that they'll push it up at least until those IPOs get out and start trading for an hour. So we'll see how that does. But I suspect we'll get kind of a push up into the end of the week. And then, of course, fund uh, buying takes over. And uh, at best, you probably push that to a draw. So if I was going to short, probably wouldn't be till a week from Wednesday, maybe. But uh, we shall see. We'd have to have some probably big news. And frankly, there just isn't that much out there as a catalyst, either to push, uh, push the market higher or lower other than those IPOs. Uh, we've got a few things out of the way politically. And of course, the last major thing out here for a, uh, a market that moves at least slightly higher is the trade deal. I think a lot of people are... Uh, Hopping on that bandwagon once again for the Russell and why it's up almost uh, eight points today with the other ones down uh, more mildly, let's put it that way. Uh, of course, the Russell's just up half a percent, so it's not the uh, that. But, uh, you know, S&P up four-tenths of a percent, Dow's up quarter of a percent, NASDAQ up uh, four-tenths of a percent. So everything pretty much there. And again, get a lot of shorting right after lunch the last few days, and then we have to see actually how the uh, how the big guys at the end of the day actually come in. Um, but uh, we shall see. Uh, what else do we have happening? Um, gold was down a little bit earlier. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, da -da -da, I'm showing gold down seven dollars and sixty cents at thirteen fifteen. Silver off fourteen cents at fifteen uh, forty two. Platinum up a buck. Eh, not bad. Copper, again, uh, keeping a very close eye on that. Uh, if that starts to move, it's probably a good indication that someone thinks something's happened in the uh, trade deal. Um, it's up less less than a uh, half a penny, but it's not down, so we keep an eye on that. Um, Shanghai, way off last night, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Yep, just a lot of stuff. Anyway, we'll keep a, a close eye on it. Yeah, market continues to fade. Yeah, you don't like that. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Oh, we want to look at uh, the dollar. Uh, still hanging around in the 96s. 96.18.8 cents uh, right now, which is not much. It's up about 12 cents on the day. And, of course, uh, the volume... Um, yeah, kind of like Laster, uh, luck, la luck, Laster, luck, luster, uh, 3.9 billion shares as we start the show. So we've got a lot of charts to look at. Kind of a quiet day, as I said, not a lot of catalyst to go higher, not a lot of catalyst to go lower, but it certainly seems that, uh, we've got sellers still on the market. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, hey, we'll see that. 
Let's do a little history, and uh, then we'll get into charts in the second segment. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating, and on this day in 1999, the first email virus designed to spread across the Internet uh, creates widespread damage, one of the fastest spreading viruses in history, because, of course, there wasn't a lot of antiviruses at the time. Melissa was uh, released into the wild on an early Friday morning. Within three days, would infect between 100,000 and 250,000 computers around the world. Uh, why the virus did not directly cause any damage, its sheer volume of email that it generated crashed many corporate cough, Microsoft cough, Email servers, of course, named after the wife of Microsoft's founder on this day in 1999. So uh, let's keep an eye on this and see what's happening. Let's go to the charts, actually. I wanted to see how a few of these things were going. Um, let's see. I didn't see any news. Uh, Boeing's been trying to bounce. Uh, it opened up, and from what I could tell, a lot of short sellers still piling on to this. Seems kind of long in the tooth to be going after it here. I could have seen pulling the trigger right at $400 when it gapped down um, on that day. What was that, the 11th? But uh, down here, it seems kind of like the risk-reward, barely four. Open up a little higher, it's down. Not a lot of volume today, four and a half million shares so far. But going into that uh, support line at 365.55, um, a lot of shorts. So it just always makes me think that maybe there's something else going on out here. Okay, uh, take a quick look at Microsoft MSFT. MSFT, okay. Well, you're back sitting on that. You're down today, 17 million shares. Yesterday, you had 25.4. So maybe you get to 22 million shares today. Uh, you did spike up, even though you didn't have enough volume to hold that. I 120.82 on the 21st. You're back into this line of support. And again, not a lot of volume. It doesn't say there's much going on there. Okay, to, to, to what else do we have? Let's go ahead and start looking at some charts that I had uh, earlier in the day. Um, it was also kind of keeping an eye on some of the uh, stocks out here like the bulk shippers that should rip on any kind of trade deal. Didn't look all that bad. Of course, most of these tanker companies are penny stocks and at one time were worth 1500 bucks a shade. Uh, it slips sliding away. Okay. Um, you got uh, a little bit more volume yesterday, but not that much more significant. TK tank tankers, that's T N K. Um, one of the stocks that popped up in my scan, believe it or not, is Tilray. Uh, I don't know if, th if this thing has the opportunity to come back from the dead, uh, but it's finally coming back down with some light volume. And, uh, we'll talk more about that. As I return, because I will return, just like MacArthur. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Uh, we were just talking about Tilray out here making what might be a final low out here after getting blown apart from 300 bucks. Looks like it needs to come back into uh, March 8th, which is $64.45. 3 million shares. Today you got about 786,000 shares. So I don't know if this thing ever comes back from the dead. Uh, but uh, eh, maybe their new CEO is named Lazarus. But uh, certainly, finally, after all the turmoil and torment, maybe making a low out here at that $64, $45 level. THS, which is Treehouse Foods, um, finally getting back to a fairly long resistance level. Uh, if you were thinking short, uh, this is the pattern that I like. And that is that you've got a fairly decent setup for risk reward. Uh, blew apart on earnings back on the 2nd of November, did so on 13.8 million shares. Now, you came back into it today, or yesterday you had 1.3 million shares. Today, just 300,000 shares. You filled about half that gap. And generally, the play out there is to pull the trigger on that short. Uh, and uh, look at the top of the gap as your stop. Uh, other stocks that uh, seem to be back to at least support levels are Sony, S-N-E. This is coming back to its long-term gap higher going back to October 31st. You had 6.8 million shares on that. Um, yesterday, you had uh, 954,000 shares. Day before that, 1.6 million shares. And 800,000 shares so far today on the bounce. So not much of a bounce, but certainly Sony does look like uh, the energy off the February 25th high wasn't as bad. Now, you did have that big gap down on the 20th uh, that had some volume. But other than that, it's back to this support level. A lot of times it'll bounce off there a few times. So there may be something in that. What else do we have? Snap on tools. What did I like about this? Oh, I like that it was testing a fairly recent low back against this gap higher. That was on the 4th of January, gapped up with 1.25 million shares. Came back down, had higher volume 
almost 2 million shares on February 7th. So you know it's going to come back down there and say hello to my little friend, 150, 25. That's February 7th. So you had 2 million shares there. You got back into it a couple days ago with half a million shares. So not too bad. You got a little bounce out of here. Uh, but uh, certainly you got just a, at least some support at these levels. You'd probably expect it to bounce a little uh, and either go higher and start getting volume or die without volume and then come back down and break that low. I don't see much in that now. Party, party, party animals, party city, holding companies, P-R-T-Y. Uh, $8 has been kind of uh, the support area on this one, going back to November 8th, where it had 6.5 million shares. You went into that last few days with 2 million shares, 1.6 million shares today. You bounced a little bit on 560,000 shares, but probably some decent support. Um, certainly came off with some energy back on the 28th of February with about 4.4 million shares, but $8 looks like fairly decent support levels. Uh, Pol is this Polaris? Yeah, Polaris Industries coming back to its recent lows and bouncing off the January 29th low at $80.24, 2.14 million shares. Yesterday, just 562,000 shares as it went through it. The day before, 553,000 shares. Now, today, probably going to do just a little bit more volume, but you certainly are finding at least these stocks uh, without a lot of energy on the way up or down, kind of bouncing off these uh, highs and lows with light volume. Newell Rubbermaid, another one out here on very light volume, going back to the October 29th low at $14.88. Nine, nine, nine million shares. And that's uh, two days ago, you had uh, 6.7 million shares yesterday. You went and dipped behind it a little bit farther with 5 million shares today. A little doji out here with just 2.8 million shares. So again, a lot of these stocks um, blew apart, had bad earnings, came back, tested their, at least for the first time, tested the lower volumes out here, but not much volume so far. Still up nine points on the S&P. Cash 50 on the Dow. Is that right? Let's update that. 55 on the Dow. NASDAQ still up 24 and a half. Russell up 6.6. Eh, .6. Okay. NVIDIA. Got some questions about this one today. Again, uh, if you're thinking short, I'm going to say that you want at least 195, maybe 193 on it. There's a double gap that comes through that. But for the most part, you just want or you keep on hoping that you get about one half of the gap filled before you pull the trigger. I'm not exactly sure that NVIDIA is going to blow up as bad as everybody thought it would. We were looking for something like March to April, um, thinking that the market, uh, the uh, stock might take off about six months uh, in front of them getting rid of all the piles and piles of RAM that they had. Maybe that's going a little bit better than I thought, uh, but certainly it has bounced off the recent lows and back higher. Uh, again, you don't have uh, what I'd call massive volume, but it doesn't look all that bad. Uh, would you please comment about the latest development court case uh, on Qualcomm and Apple and the stock impacts as you see it? Um, so far, there's only been one small case settled. The bigger cases are coming in April. So I'm going to say that there isn't that much um, that in at least in the court cases right now. Uh, in Germany, there's been basically the ability for Qualcomm to say, I'm not going to let any of Apple products in using um, the Intel technology because they're basically stole our intellectual property, which apparently the Germans say absolutely they did. Uh, and again, um, Apple just, it doesn't like the fact that Qualcomm doesn't have to prostrate themselves in front of them. Uh, even when, they, in fact, when you look at it, Apple's about 15%, maybe 14% of the entire smartphone business. Do they really have to prostrate themselves to get Apple's business? Uh, Apple's kind of like Walmart. They can 
push suppliers around, except Qualcomm, because they have 150,000 patents. Any which one of them, they can torment Apple with ad nauseum. Uh, and of course, patents are there for a reason. Apple says that Qualcomm wouldn't be as big as it was um, without it. And of course, if you remember anything about Qualcomm, in 2000, it was 200 bucks. It may have gone down to 10 bucks after that. But Qualcomm was something before Apple in smartphones. So it's not like Qualcomm has never been to the rodeo before. We'll be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And had a uh, email come in about asking me whether or not I'd be bearish. And uh, um, again, a lot of these patterns out here are right on the, uh, are basically hugging either nine day or three day. Uh, moving average, which is, I'm not big on moving averages, but it's a good ballistic uh, curve that you can put on a chart to let you know. But you certainly are finding uh, that as support. Any close below those, and you'd have to probably start thinking about being short. But again, I'm not seeing a lot of buying pressure, uh, selling pressure, but I'm not seeing a lot of 
buying pressure either. Markets kind of, uh, we might, in fact, fortunately be stuck in the doldrums around this 2800 level, but we will see before the end of the day. I have no problem changing my opinion if the facts change, but right now, all we're seeing is eh, kind of erosion of the market, but still not good. Up seven points still on the S&P cash, up 46 on the Dow, and 16 on the NASDAQ. Uh, let's see some other ones out here. Myelin Pharmaceuticals. Um, again, these gaps have been acting fairly decent uh, as resistance levels, but uh, has pulled back fairly uh, off this, uh, and really kind of this first attempt back up here to 29.30, but light volume actually fairly light uh, in the pullbacks of the last few days. Micron. Uh, now this one went to the previous high, did so on a lot of volume, and then kind of gave it up. It's come back, filled the gap, and what you have to look at this one is just the light volume today, which is 19.2 million shares yesterday. 34.5 million shares. So you did go a little higher. You've pulled back today, but uh, not the kind of volume that you had yesterday or the day before. Uh, what else do we have? MetLife. MetLife uh, had been looking at this gap up on the 4th of January with 6 million shares as support. It actually blew through there and had a higher volume. So you got to look at this one coming back down to 41 bucks. Maybe again on lighter volume sets up the support, but still problematic. T -t 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 still up six points on the S&P cash. Like I said, a lot of these, you're just waiting for some solid close under uh, the nine-day moving average. And man, you're right on it with clack. But again... You've come back down off the highs with even a lighter volume. Yesterday, 872,000 shares. Today, eight, uh, 560,000 shares. You know, when you had a couple of days ago, one and a half, uh, 1.6 million shares. So you've pulled back. But certainly, when we talk about volume off the top, not a lot in those so far. Okay. Nordstrom. Um, Kind of interesting to see this show up on my scan, and that is that uh, fairly light volume down around the $43 range. You've had several attempts down here. Got to $42.54 and reversed out just a couple of days ago on the March 21st low. Uh, kind of came back, a little bit more of a pop. Now, today you've got a bit of a pop, but again on fairly light volume. But actually, for a chart, not as bad looking as one would think for the retail space. I'm not big a fan of getting into retail these days, but certainly not a great deal there. Uh, Humana, another one uh, breaking through the previous low of 1.3 million shares on March 8th. That was 265.49. Now today you've got, uh, let's call it 850,000 shares. So you're probably going to break through that low, but it doesn't look like the volume's actually going to be expanding that much. Uh, Golden Star Resources also popped up on my chart. 900,000 shares on February 9th at $4.18. Uh, you had just 527,000 shares yesterday as it broke through that previous high. Today, just 242,000 shares. Um, energy was just about the same on the way up as on the way down. FBIO. Fortress Biotech, a few of these biotechs actually giving signals that there may be some support coming in uh, in the biotech ETFs. Uh, we've got plenty of time here. Two, 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 two. Okay. Gap higher, 31st of January, did so on 9.6 million shares. Came in, tested it with 417,000 shares. March 6th, bounced up to $2.19. Back in yesterday with 569,000 shares. Today, just 84,000 shares. So not a huge volume stock, but certainly if you're into the penny stocks, looks like, you know, you want to talk about no volume, 85,000 shares compared to almost 600,000 shares yesterday. Something's going on out here. There is no volume in that stock.
to, to what else do we have? X, uh, EXR, which is extra space storage. I think there were a couple of these storage spaces actually showing up on my radar. Uh, you got a triple top out here at 100 bucks for EXR. And the big thing is the light volume of three days ago, two days ago, at 102.29 with 870,000 shares comparing uh, to the 1.3 million shares on the December 6th high. Energy, well, just a little less, but just not enough to say that there's something big happening out there. Uh, two, 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 okay. Uh, what else do we have? B, B E A T. By uh, Cardio Net, uh, finding a nice low volume low yesterday compared to the February 22nd low. $63.10, $2, I see, what is it, 2.5 million shares. Got into it yesterday with less than 500,000 shares, so a fifth of the volume. Opened up a little higher, uh, 345,000 shares so far today, but does kind of look like maybe uh, right in here in the 61, 62, 63 level, there is some decent level of support. A-I-M-T. Uh, um, uh, uh, Eye immune therapies um, also found uh, kind of a bounce off this January 24th, a little more volume than you would think. Uh, but uh, just a lot of those actually showing up with light volume. ADT uh, bouncing off its previous low of March 14th at $6.09 with a little less than 6 million shares. Got into it 3.74 million shares ye uh, yesterday. Is that right? No, day before yesterday. Uh, yeah, 3.7 million shares yesterday. You had 2 million shares today. Very light 1.3 million shares. So, um, you know, you're going to be right or wrong pretty quickly on some of these that are testing the previous lows on very light volume. <coughs> Adamus Pharmaceuticals, ADMS been bouncing along the $7 level for a while. Uh, 700,000 shares back on December 20, uh, 20th. Uh, that was 746,000 shares. Uh, yesterday, you got into it with 385,000 shares. Any close back above 742 negates it, most of the bearishness. And of course, you had this huge gap down back on the 5th of March. Um, dead cat bounce, fill the gap halfway. Could take it at $10.50. If this is a low, we'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back uh, up almost 11 points on the S&P cash now. Again, yeah, these afternoons, man, they're so light and variable. The big guys kind of stand back till about 3.30. So I don't put a lot in to uh, anything until the close like we had on Friday. You, you just really don't know. They just stand so far back and let the computers run for a while. And then they're going to buy, they step in or sell. But uh, you can spend, I think, too much time. Uh, in the day, trying to figure out what these guys are going to do when it only matters probably the last 30 minutes of the day. First two hours or maybe even two and a half hours in the last 30 minutes. That seems to be about what uh, when the signals actually mean anything coming through. Uh, Adamus Pharmaceuticals, as we said, uh, pretty nice uh, test of the $7.42 low ADMP, which is uh, a, an Adamus pharmaceuticals, pretty close, testing, uh, it's a little $2 stock, $2.01 on December 20th with 2 million shares. Uh, half that yesterday, 132,000 shares, a little tick there. And of course, uh, we'll look at the IBB in a second. Um, what else do we have? Uh, ADAP, Aptimmune Therapeutics, another one uh, has a lot of these Stocks are kind of low stock price. December 24th, $3.60, 382, no, 682. So it's almost 700,000 shares. Got into it with just 250,000 shares yesterday. Bounced. This one actually doesn't look too bad. And Acor, which is Accordia Therapeutics, another one bouncing along the lows. Uh, this one with a little under a million shares yesterday uh, as it hits that $12 range and you're back into it. So uh, let's take a look at the IBB and see if we've got anything in this one. Uh, to, 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 to see where we're at. Uh, to, 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 okay. Um, you did test the previous low of March 8th, 107.53. 3.2 million shares, got into it with 2.53 million shares. You you know, you might get yet another test, but again, um, you had a couple of days that came in with a little bit more energy, uh, but you're kind of in here. With so many of these stocks, I probably had another 20 or 30 in that area. I'm thinking that you're at fairly decent support levels in the biotechs. I don't know if it's going higher, but uh, that's it. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the biggies. Mr. Big. Uh, with Amazonians up a little higher today on, what's that, uh, almost 4 million shares so far. So you did kind of pull back and have a little bit of volume initially. You're just still banging around this uh, 1778 high and again what did you get today at the high 1805 so just kind of skimming along on it 
And again, early in my trading career, um, I paid a lot of attention to uh, Tim Ord, learned a lot from him. But one of the things he talked about was uh, stocks that hang out at highs. And this is certainly what Amazon's doing. It's just hanging out here. The longer that it hangs out at the highs, the more likely it's going to break through them. Now, maybe this is a one-day deal where it spikes, runs all the shorts out, and then closes back below. But generally, the thought is if it continues to hang out at highs, then you should stand back and wait for it to give you the signal either to go long as it breaks out with a sign of strength or that it spikes up those highs, runs all the shorts, and then closes back. And of course, once you've got the weak handed shorts out, much easier to find a play in that market. Okay, what else is going on out here? Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, gold, do, 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 MU. Take a quick look at MU. Uh, 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 and somebody in the den saying something about holding to Wednesday night. Generally, on IPOs, what they'll do is literally hold it up through the time that it actually starts to trade. So if they'll push it up, make everybody feel pretty good about getting into the IPO. Uh, they'll price it and lock in that cash. And then they also make sure that the market's kind of up when the stock comes out so it instantly doesn't get creamed because uh, they're responsible actually for buying those shares and supporting the price, whatever it is when it comes out. So just uh, know that if it comes out on, if the IPO is priced Wednesday night to come out and start trading on Thursday, that they'll probably hold that up at least until like 10.30 or 11 after it's been trading for a while. And of course, if it's Friday, then you uh, go all the way into Friday, which then takes you into fund buying. So again, like I said, I'm more thinking that uh, as this thing holds up uh, and goes, either way the, the, uh, the ball bounces, we probably have some support in this market into um, next week. Now, maybe it just goes sideways but I don't see a lot of reasons for believing that this market's going down without a big catalyst that I do not see now. In fact, the only catalyst out there that I do know or think about right now is a trade deal, and that would push the market up, not down. So not seeing a lot in that. Um, got somebody wants us to look at AMAT. Uh, and of course, you came off, but you got no volume here again. Let's take a look at the SMHs. And you spiked the high. You did so with a volume. So you got to retest the SMHs at 110.60. That's the March 21st high. Again, like I'm saying, a lot of this stuff just looks like it needs to go one more time higher. If you wanted to go bearish and then fail uh, on something uh, like a ballistic curve, like nine-day or three-day uh, displaced moving average or something, there isn't a lot of volume in here. But again, people have kind of been shorting a lot of these. I uh, got another email that says, yesterday you said the market was going to close at about 2800 and it was 2798 or almost 2799 uh, How did you determine that. I just kind of experience uh, just looking at the stocks that are out there. And again, no one's going to get rich predicting that kind of stuff. More important to me uh, was that I was looking for follow through today. And of course, we had that bounce. Um, but again, I think that there are a lot of people out there that are really, really bearish. And every time this market pops, where they used to buy the dips that are now piling on, uh, the shorts. And again, I think this could be just one big short squeeze into through the next week, but we shall see.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're up uh, 10 points on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's up 60. NASDAQ. Eh, let's update this just to make sure. Eh, update. Uh, up 64 on the Dow. NASDAQ's up 23, Russell's up 7. Uh, so we'll look at it, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, one more thing. Oh, uh, there was a ruling that I was expecting the first week of April uh, on Qualcomm. I, apparently, it did come out while I was on the air. I'm going to have to look through it a little bit more. We'll talk about it then. Um, but uh, it would give, uh, at least in the United States, not just Germany, which is the, and China, which is where, Qualcomm had already run, uh, won, uh, but would give them in the United States, if this is the same thing I uh, have been reading about the last four months, the ability to uh, keep uh, iPhones from coming into country. Again, I, it just seems like uh, Apple has been overly dramatic, and I think that they wanted to use Qualcomm as the whipping boy uh, to let others in the supply chain know exactly what they can do to them. Uh, because, uh, you know, whoever's got or wants to use Qualcomm part, got to pay the same price. They can always go somewhere else, uh, like Intel. But the problem with the Intel product has been, or at least for the cell phones, has been that the modem is only about three-fourths as fast as the uh, Qualcomm. And again, anytime you get into radio stuff, um, anybody that's been in electronics, a lot of people talk about it as the dark arts. 
uh, getting radio to work in a very specific fashion isn't straight science. It's a lot of intuition. It's a lot of uh, uh, very specifically bright people that have been in that business for a long time. You just don't pick up all the books and learn all the tricks of the trade. Digital, eh, you, given enough time, you can teach anybody. But uh, radio frequency stuff, black arts, magic, the unexpected. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to.